Hello and welcome to the Irish History Podcast. My name is Finn DeWire and this episode, as you might be able to hear in the background, is being recorded from a beach called Passage East in County Waterford. Now a good place to start today's show might be with the title and just to explain that a bit. So Omaha Beach, if you're not familiar with the name, was one of the most famous beaches used in the D-Day landings in the Second World War. Now that saw the uh, Western Allies invade Northern France and was a very important and pivotal moment in the defeat of Nazi Germany. Those events obviously shaped not only the Second World War but later 20th century and even 21st century history. So uh, Omaha Beach is a very important place in world history. Now over the course of the summer though I began to develop this idea of recording an episode around the history maybe of beaches in general or a specific beach and this had been at the back of my mind right throughout the course of the summer and then one day when I was driving near here and I saw a sign for Passage East it struck me that this place is a bit forgotten in wider Irish history but at one time I think it played as decisive a role as Omaha Beach did in the 20th century. Now centuries have passed since Passage East changed Irish history but I felt it would be good to come here look at this beach and talk about the remarkable history that happened here. Now that is not well known I don't think it's that surprising. When it comes to history overall I think beaches are pretty unusual places. We don't really think of them as having a history like if you think about a famous beach it's often the town beside the beach that's famous as opposed rather to the beach itself. And there's lots of reasons for this. If you actually look back in the historical record, beaches actually don't have that much of a presence in records. Events tend not to really happen at beaches. When I was researching this episode, for example, I just checked newspaper archives and Passage East is not really mentioned very frequently, save certainly by the, um, from the early 19th century. And when you go back from there, it doesn't tend to come up much. There's not events happening on the beach. So I suppose the historical events that happen on beaches are pretty limited. So that does explain why they don't have, I suppose, a rich history. Also, I think though, we don't associate them with specific historical events, even if they did happen on the beaches, if they did happen on beaches, because they're always changing. They're not the same. It's really hard to locate a historical event in a coastal landscape like this beach here at Passage East. So like for example, a better way to explain this might be if you go to a historic house, a castle, a cathedral, you can often walk essentially in the footsteps of historic figures or follow in the events as they happened in that building. The same can't really be said for beaches. Even when historical events took place on beaches, they have changed so much over the centuries since those events took place. For example, the sand that's around me here wasn't here 100 years ago. The water you can hear lapping on the shore was obviously different then. I'm going to talk later on about events that took place centuries and centuries ago. So it's very possible even then that this beach looked entirely different. So I think that might explain why beaches don't always have a history. Nevertheless, I'm going to argue over the course of this episode that beaches do have a history and that this place that I'm sitting right now is arguably one of the most important landscapes in Ireland. Irish history changed because of events here 800 years ago and in the grand scheme of things as I said earlier I'm going to make the case that where I'm sitting right now Passage East in County Waterford is the equivalent of what Omaha Beach is to Europe. So over the course of this episode then, I'm going to first talk a bit more about the history of beaches and how they've changed actually over the last two centuries because our use of beaches has really changed in the last two centuries and that'll help us maybe understand why Passage East uh, is not that well known today because in the medieval period when I'm going to be talking about, uh, they were viewed completely differently. Then I'm going to look at uh, two or three events that happened along this beach and another beach further down and this general area to get a sense of why it's so important. Now before I get into all that I just want to do a bit of housekeeping. Some of you have been in touch asking why there wasn't a show over the last few weeks. There's definitely been a bit of confusion around this because some people seem to think that the show was only going to be available on Patreon and Acast Plus because that was advertised a lot over the last couple of weeks. Now that's not the case at all. I'm always eternally grateful for the listeners who support my work on Patreon and Acast Plus. And it's not an exaggeration to say the show wouldn't exist or be happening without them. 
But I think myself and all those listeners who support my work on Patreon and Acast Plus are committed to making history as accessible as possible. So while there's always going to be exclusive content, it's the least I can do for the listeners who support my work. The main show, this show here, will continue to be free. It's really something that I feel really passionately about. Over the last couple of weeks, there was reasons why the show didn't come out. For example, I will admit on one weekend I was catching up with friends I haven't seen since COVID began, so that knocked one episode out. But since then, I have been writing episodes in the War of Independence series. The writer's block I talked about uh, in other episodes, that's over. I'm back in writing. I have two episodes completed. That's episodes 16 and 17 in the series. Now, I do want to finish 18 and 19 before I release any of them. That will give me time to write the last episodes. That will be 20 to 24 so hopefully there won't be any more breaks the war of independence series will come back in september and uh, there won't be any more breaks until the series finishes sometime in late october between now and then like that's the return of the war of independence series i will have more episodes like this for example next week there's an episode coming out with uh, the archaeologist neil jackman where me and Neil are talking about sites you might want to visit in Ireland. That's a great episode. If you want to do something over the next couple of weeks before, I suppose, winter comes in, or if you're planning a trip to Ireland maybe next year, we've got a list of great sites and how you can find those kind of off-the-beaten-track places that you don't always hear about. Anyway, that's all coming up. Now I want to talk about this beach here. So first I want to say a little bit about the history of beaches because they have an unusual past or the way humans certainly have used beaches over the last say thousand years has changed so much so today we have this association with beaches i think the main association we might have today is holidays you know you whenever you see a picture of a beach it's usually with loads of people sunbathing swimming in the sea that's only something that developed in the last two centuries and in the middle of the 19th century really it began to take off Prior to that, people didn't really come to beaches, save if, it, if there was a purpose. Now, I'm going to talk a bit about uh, the purpose of two invasions uh, that happened here at Passage East later on in the episode. But other than that, people might have, obviously, fishermen may have come to beaches or people came to collect food. But people didn't come here to, to, for leisure. I think if we'd gone back three centuries and said to someone, we're going to sunbathe on a beach, they would have looked at us in astonishment. Um, Beaches were, I suppose, what you might describe as a, I don't know, is it liminal the word, but you know, it, it happened, it exists between land and sea, and certainly the sea in the medieval period and into the early modern and right into the 19th century, the sea was a dangerous place. You know, the drownings, um, also just the idea of this huge expanse that people had no purpose for it. Also, people didn't travel or weren't able to travel huge distances. So a beach like this at Passage East, yes, the people beside it in the village of Passage East could come here and use the beach if they had wanted to. But you wouldn't have had you know, people coming from miles and miles around, which you would today. So that gives us a sense that beaches in their history were very, very different places. They're not, they weren't always the places we associate with them at all. Now, to move on from there, I want to talk about this specific beach. Now, to understand the fascinating history that happened here, I need to explain the landscape around it. So, if you want to find Passage East, you can find it on Google Maps, just type in Passage East, uh, it's two separate words, but you'll see it's located at the top of what's called Waterford Harbour. And Waterford Harbour is the estuary, essentially, of three large rivers in Ireland, the Barrow, the Nore, and the Shore. Now, Waterford City is probably, in, this, in the immediate hinterland, is the most important uh, settlement and has been for well over a thousand years. It's on the Shore River, one of those three rivers. But Passage East became immensely important, especially after Waterford had been founded. It's located 12 kilometres from Waterford down towards uh, the open sea along the estuary. But between here and Waterford, the, you can't really, uh, the, the basically the, the coastline between Passage East and Waterford is quite steep cliffs. So you couldn't land boats there. And that's why Passage East would have gained um, a degree of importance because it's the first place down the coast with a big, large beach that ships could come up, um, particularly in the medieval period. And you could disembark an army, for example, because Waterford itself is a defended settlement further up the Shore River. 
and it would be very difficult to get an army in, particularly if you're expecting a, a hostile reception. So over the course of Waterford's history then, Passage East became an immensely important place because it's this huge long beach that stretches where I am here in Passage East all the way down to Woodstown. Now the shore or the tide is in at the moment so walking down that beach would probably be quite difficult but when the tide will be out you can walk the whole way down and there's this huge sandy beach. So as we're going to talk about now in a minute an invasion fleet this would have been ideal in the medieval period. If you've got thousands of sailors and hundreds of boats they could easily fit into Waterford Harbour in front of me here but also disembark on the beach and that was a tricky business in the medieval period much more tricky than we might expect. So now we're going to move on to why this place or why I think Irish history turned at Passage East and that's for two events that happened in the early 1170s. Now that's a long time ago so you're going to have to bear with me on that. It is 800 or more than 800 years ago but two events took place here at Passage East. The first of those was on August the 23rd 1170. Now if you'd been here on August the 23rd 1170 to my right down the estuary and the open to sea you would have seen a sizable fleet of ships move in to Waterford Harbour and eventually then they came up to here at Passage East and they beached on the shore and off those ships a thousand soldiers and 200 knights disembarked. They were led by a tall figure, a man who was in his 50s probably by this point, that was uh, Richard de Clare, the Earl of Pembroke, better known in Irish history as Strongbow. Now what was actually happening at that event was the Norman invasion proper you might say of Ireland was beginning. Now Strongbow had effectively said he was going to help a, a, an exiled king, a man called Diarmid MacMurrah, regain his throne in the Kingdom of Leinster. Small numbers of Normans had began to arrive in Ireland from as early as 1167, three years before uh, Strongbow himself arrives. But when Strongbow lands with this in army um, on the 23rd of August and disembarks here at Passage East, Irish history is beginning to change and change rapidly. In the following days, Strongbow would show his intent that he's going to, uh, that he means business essentially. They marched 12 kilometers up the coast. They took the city of Waterford in a siege. That was very significant because if they were supposed to be here just to help a Gaelic king, Diarmid MacMurrah, regain his title as King of Leinster, uh, the, king, uh, the city of Waterford should have been off limits to them because Waterford is not in the Kingdom of Leinster. But what this indicated is that the, the, the Normans in Ireland had ambitions far beyond just reinstating this king. But maybe we'll come back to that day, the 23rd of August, 1170. Now, if you had, uh, when I used it, when I was coming up with the title of today's episode, I compared it to Omaha Beach, and we have these ideas maybe from the Second World War of people rushing up the shore and being attacked by, uh, defend by German defenders trying to drive back the Allies as they invaded Europe. Obviously, in the Middle Ages, it was quite different. There was no one tried to force uh, Strongbow back into the sea. Those events here on the 23rd of August, 1170, would have looked pretty impressive. So I've made an episode called Dublin uh, 1303, The Business of War. And if you listen back to that episode, you can see the logistics involved in moving an army in the Middle Ages was quite complex. So I said there, there was 200 knights and a thousand soldiers. They would have come in here with those knights, for example, you would have had war horses. The war horses were kept in these cages that they made from wattle that were put on the ships. So when those ships came in, one of the big things to do was get those war horses off the ships onto the shore. They had to be very careful not to hurt or damage those war horses any, in any way. They were effectively the tanks of the Middle Ages being brought up onto the shore. Now back off the beach here, there's high cliffs that run up behind me. You can imagine maybe, say, Gaelic Irish people observing on, wondering what's happening. They're probably aware there's some small numbers of Normans in Ireland helping this King Diarmid MacMurrah. They hadn't made a huge difference yet, but if you were looking onto the shore here, you're seeing a huge army disembark, but also you're seeing these big war horses. And I think, I think looking on, 
you'd probably look on and go, something is changing here. You know, that thing, did people at the time know history was changing? I think you would have known that something significant was happening. Now, in the years after Strongbow arrives, or in the year after Strongbow arrives, he takes Waterford, as I mentioned, takes it within a couple of days in a very brutal siege. Um, they eventually break into the city. And after that, then, they make their way for Dublin because Dublin in the Middle Ages is, a very, is the most important settlement in Ireland. After another siege up there, they manage to take the city. And over the following year, I think it's, you know, they're extending their influence in Ireland, but things don't go that well. They face a siege from the Gaelic Irish who try and retake Dublin from Strongbow and his Norman followers in the summer of 1171 and the Normans managed to survive that. But then this much bigger problem, and this leads to the second event here at Passage East, arguably even more important than Strongbow's arrival. By the summer of 1171, a year after Strongbow has been in Ireland, his king, the king of England, the king of parts of France, Henry II, one of the most powerful men in Northwestern Europe at the time, or the most powerful man in Northwestern Europe, he's beginning to look over at Ireland and go, hmm, he had, let, he had given Strongbow permission to come to Ireland and now he's getting a bit worried going, what's Strongbow and those other Normans in Ireland doing? Are they going to set up a rival kingdom? And eventually Henry decides he's going to come to, uh, he's going to, come to Ireland himself. And in Wales they assemble uh, an army of uh, 4,000 men and 500 mounted knights. They also start preparing, they're not coming to Ireland, it should be noted, or one of the reasons rather they're coming to Ireland is they're, they're wondering are they going to actually have to fight Normans like Strongbow here to force them to submit because Henry is worried that they might be uh, planning to set up a rival Norman kingdom in Ireland and he's not going to allow that. Now technically they're all friends but you know it's that thing, these are all people who uh, live by the sword and die by the sword. And Henry knows that a man like Strongbow has ambitions and he's prepared there, he, he prepares therefore that he might have to fight them. And as part of this, and this is something I find really fascinating, in Wales, they started to prepare that they might have to fight sieges in Ireland and they start to build prefabricated uh, siege engines over in Wales. Then they take them apart, put them onto the ships. This huge fleet now that's assembled in Wales to come to Ireland they're actually trapped. This is a, a, a thing about medieval uh, sea travel. They're trapped in Wales for, I think it's about two weeks. They can't sail because of the weather. Then this opening in, in mid-October opens up. Henry sets sail and arrives very close to here to passage. It's on the same beach, further down the coast, a crook, literally a couple of, uh, about a mile down the, the, the beach. He arrives a crook and uh, this army disembarks. Now this is 4,000 uh, men. 500 nights you would have had those scenes again of getting the war horses coming ashore through the splash but also you would have seen things like those uh, prefabricated siege engines being carried off the ships if you're watching this who we were talking earlier about would someone observing on strongbow's arrival realize things were changing if you saw this army coming ashore you definitely know something major was changing they also probably would have brought uh, a certain amount of supplies with them fodder for the horses, probably a certain amount of food. They don't know what reception they're going to get. Now, ultimately, Strongbow looks at this and decides, you know what, I can't fight this guy. We don't really know. Strongbow, sorry, I should say, was actually with Henry by this point. He had gone to Wales to meet him and they'd kind of made their peace. So by the time they actually arrive, all the Normans in Ireland have no intention of fighting Henry. That army comes ashore, no one's going to beat it. But what's very significant about this army coming ashore here is not that they don't that they get gain submission from the normans that was i suppose somewhat inevitable once that our army comes ashore that's a, a statement of intent but the gaelic irish kings uh, many several gaelic irish kings pay homage to henry henry also claims lordship over ireland at this point and this is the first time a king of england ha had ever done this that he had claimed lordship over ireland and this starts uh, the long and I suppose you could say tortured history between England and Ireland. Now Passage East, where I'm sitting now, obviously played such an important role in that. Yes, Henry only came ashore here, 
but that's the history of a beach. It's, I suppose, the access to a country. Today, we don't see them like that. We see them, as I said earlier, as places of leisure and things like that. But in the medieval period in particular, it was a gateway to a country. A beach like this here at Passage East that stretches for miles down the coast, you know, that was a vulnerable spot. Impossible to drive back an army, I suppose, on such a broad front, but also it gave them the maneuverability. Also the fact that the harbour itself is huge would have given them the space to bring in large numbers of ships and the mobility to move them around. So I guess what my, my point is, is that while you can walk down a beach today, they have this fascinating history and it's, it's a history encapsulated not in a rock here or a feature there, but the entire expanse of the beach. I hope through the course of this episode it's been a bit different. I was trying to, it's been kind of playing at the back of my mind over the whole course of the summer. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to come to Passage East, it's a beautiful, beautiful place, beautiful beach. I don't know, sometimes you can walk down this, I don't know how, how, how much you can appreciate the history here because as I've said, beaches change all the time. You're not going to walk down and say, oh, that's where Henry II came ashore and sat down. We don't know the specifics of that, but I think the landscape, when you look around, you can really appreciate why this, why this was so important in that period when Ireland's history turned and certainly went from a period where Gaelic kings in Ireland had been battling for control and then you have this arrival of this much more powerful larger force coming in from England. Okay folks I'm going to leave that episode here. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. Next week as I say I'm back with a different episode again that's with Neil Jackman. Well and in the meantime I'm going to be hopefully pushing through those episodes on the War of Independence. Thanks for everyone who got in touch actually over the last couple of weeks when I mentioned I had writer's block. I got some lovely emails and I really appreciate that. And thanks to everyone who's continuing to support the show on Patreon and Acast Plus. That really means so much to me. And I know that the content was, I suppose, different over the last couple of weeks because the War of Independence series uh, uh, took a, <laughs> hit a hit a wall for a couple of weeks there. So I really, really appreciate uh, sticking with the show. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. Until next time, Sloan.